Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to MS Project Made Easy. Today, in response to a lot of requests I've been getting, I'm going to go over some different ways that you can format MS Project in your projects. There's different things that you can do to change the look or the feel or what you're trying to present. And sometimes it can get a little bit confusing, but definitely there's a number of ways that we can format in MS Project. So I've got this sample project that I often use and you can sort of see right now this is formatted that I can see by the days uh, how things are spread out. What a lot of people don't realize is you can sort of compress things so that it, it fits in your view a little bit better by double clicking on the time scale bar. It brought, brings up the time scale uh, adjustments box where you can customize things to show it. In, ever, in any kind of detail that you want. There's really, you, right now we've got two tiers being shown. You can actually have it show three tiers of information. You can choose, you know, the date formats that you want to show. So right now it's got basically the year and the day uh, that it's showing on uh, the uh, middle um, tier. If I go to the bottom tier, that's where the S, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is being shown again. You could format that in different ways if you wanted to as well. I kind of like it this way to be honest, uh, but you can definitely format it by um, different um, tiers. The other thing is, one of the things I do like to do a lot is I don't like when it's too spread out uh, very often. So rather than have it uh, so spread out, I like to shrink it down. So you notice as I'm shrinking that down, probably around, depends on the size of your screen, but usually around 55, 50%. You can see all of the days. My screen's fairly big, so it fits, but 55% even on a laptop screen works pretty well. And it squeezes, I can see a lot more weeks of information here. If it's showing too tight, again, if you wanna have it uh, wider, you can always um, up the numbers and that will um, increase that. I find that's really handy to know. Uh, the other thing too is sometimes when you zoom out and then you zoom back, uh, Sometimes it doesn't always go to the format that you want, like as far as individual days. Usually it does, but sometimes sometimes it doesn't. But you see, it went back there like that. Again, I would um, squeeze that squeeze that part of it into you know my 55%. I could just type it in, if, I suppose, if I wanted to, uh, and that squeezes the information there. But sometimes, again, too, when it's rather than play around with it, you've got it squeezed out. You might just want to uh, go to where it uh, says um, view and time scale and then just say show me what do I want days quarter days hours usually days and then that brings us right back it may disappear from your screen you want to bring it back on the screen rather than scrolling look for it pick the activity go to the task tab and pick scroll to task or you could hit control shift plus f5 and that would scroll to task as well. And that can be quite um, helpful for you that way. You could also uh, click on this customize quick access toolbar and you could pick you know, certain commands that you might wanna see on uh, the quick access bar. So I go to more commands and then I could look for, let's say uh, that uh, if I'm thinking about it, I'm looking for the scroll to task icon and there it is. So I could pick that. You could click uh, click on add it and now that will click OK. And now that should add that to my quick access bar. So you can see it up here now in the top left corner. Uh, it's there. So now I don't have to go searching for it or I don't have to remember uh, control uh, that uh, control uh, S5 that it had there, right? So control shift F5. I can just go up here and I can quickly select that. That's very handy. So if there's certain buttons that you want to click on all the time, this is very, very helpful for you. Just go to more commands. Secret is you got to add them. If you want to take one away, no, I don't want that scroll to task. If you click remove, that will take it away from you. And there are a lot of different icons. So if there's ones you use all the time, that's what I would suggest. And then they'll just fill in along here. Very, very helpful that way. Now, the other thing I've been asked a lot of questions on is, you know, customizing the text to the right of the bar. Like that says laborers, that's got my resources. 
Uh, what if I wanted something else there? Well, I could double click on that particular bar and you see how it says to the right? I could say, what do I want it to show to the right? Maybe I want to show the duration and I want to have it sitting there in front of me. Uh, I could just go up here, duration, click there, and that will then show on that one particular activity. So now I can see the duration. The rest are showing the, the resources. And now I see that one uh, with duration. Mal, you're probably saying to yourself, yeah, but I don't want to do that in every single activity. Right, so you want to do it on all the activities you go to the format tab and where on the format tab you see format you can pull down and you can say you know I would basically pull down I click over here to select all uh, and I would click bar and I would say here to the right I would like to show um, duration so I would click I would go looking for duration or if you know the first letter in the actual name of it and you type it, D-U, there it comes up. I could click OK. And now I've got the duration to the right of all of the activities. There's a lot of different things that you could put to the right uh, that you can choose from. I'm just picking duration uh, at uh, random, right? So you could pick, uh, you name it. There's a lot of different uh, choices besides the baseline, the cost, etc. Uh, resource that I had on there, etc. So there's a lot of choices. You can also put something to the left if you wanted to. Again, if I wanted to have like, uh, well, maybe we go with, uh, let's see, what do we got as our choices here? Let's have a little fun here and see what's, um, what's our cost. All right, so I don't know if this particular, let's see what it does. See here now we've got to the left and it put all of the costs um, on the left side. So these are different um, choices of ways of customizing. If I want to undo it and bring it back, I can just click undo a few times and I get it back to um, where it was. So that's uh, a possibility. People are always asking on that one. How do I customize that? Now, again, maybe you've got an activity. It's got it's not on the critical path, but it's a very important activity. And if it gets delayed, it means that you're going to have to switch things around on your project. So you want to show it a little bit differently. You can double click on the bar and uh, where it has bar shape, click on bar shape. And then you've got choices right under bar shape. You can um, pick different colors. So if we go uh, in this middle portion here, we could select uh, maybe we want to select like a orange for that particular uh, activity. Right. So I'll just make sure that that's selected and that'll select so it stands out you know something's up with this activity what is up with this activity you're giving it sort of like a cautionary sort of flag that it's orange it's not critical it's got some float but there's stuff going on with that again you could also give yourself a note to sort of highlight uh, you know if if this is delayed uh, we are up the creek how's that <laughs> uh, just saying something right like whatever it is that's uh, important on your project and of course then it leaves that little post-it note there that you could flag it and oh first it's flagging you that it's orange and then you're like oh we better make sure that this happens on time the way we um, planned it so i'll just click undo a few times to get rid of uh, that there we go uh, so that's another nice little customization that we can do uh, the other one that we can, that is very important to know, well, I've taught this a lot of time in the other videos, but you know, the critical path and what it means and what it does, uh, it may, if, unless you turn it on, it's probably going to look like this. And so just remember the critical path is the longest path through the project. And if you want it to display, click on that and then it will show it. What a lot of people don't know is that you could uh, go to textiles and you could say item to change and you could say critical tasks and you know what i want the critical task to be in bold the text for the critical task and i want them to be the i want them to be let's see color there we go that's the right one red and i could click ok and now all of the critical activities show up on my list in red and um, so it gives me, you know, this one's got, this one's just a regular activity. No, um, it's not on the critical path. So it's got float. 
and uh, these ones are not, right? These are critical. Uh, so I could uh, see that. And look, I can do, use my shortcut here to bring it up on screen. Uh, so that's very helpful. I know a lot of contractors that like to do something like that, uh, just to uh, highlight that and make it stand out. Uh, again, any of these things you can go back and you can change. You can always go back. Well, I could undo right now, but if I wanted to change it, just go to critical tasks. And by the way, you could do that to all, any of these kind of things. Summary tasks, you want them to look a little bit different. You could do that. Critical tasks, uh, so I could go back in here and I could say automatic color and I could say regular because I don't want it bold. And then it goes back to normal. If I just done it, I could have just clicked undo. Of course, you can click in here to change color schemes. I usually leave it at the standard one. Everybody's used to that. So I think that's probably, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Over here under format, you see how it says layout? Very helpful to know. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit so you can see it. Uh, but in the layout, some people don't want to show the linkages because sometimes on some projects you have so many and especially when it's kind of uh, squeezed up, all the lines get a little bit confusing like in here sometimes. And maybe you don't want all those lines because it's like, uh, right? Uh, so if you don't want to show the lines, you can just go to layout and say, don't show the lines, don't show the predecessors and successors and click OK. And they're all gone from view. They're not gone. You've got them there. They're in the pre predecessor column still. They're all uh, there. But maybe for print purpose, for clarity purposes, you don't want that there. Usually I leave them, to be honest, because I just like to follow the threads and I'll usually expand it. But you know, I even know, again, there's some contractors with some projects, they actually don't want to show the critical path for whatever reason. It's not my style for that, but I usually want to keep everything transparent and digital copies and let people uh, review it. But uh, there's different uh, lines of thought on that, mostly going my way, I believe. But uh, in case anybody's got different ideas, you can always shut off the critical tasks and you shut off the linkages. So if you're just printing something out, these are your start and finish dates and these are where you expect to hit your milestones and you're driving that. But if I was giving a baseline schedule to somebody, I would want all of that displayed because I want to make sure that um, we're clear on this is the linkages and when something causes a delay, I want to later be able to show it. But again, for certain reasons, you may want to take it off or turn it on. It makes perfect sense um, for those aspects. Another formatting item that we can display is the baseline. So normally we just go to the tracking Gantt. I can go slide to the left and I can go to the tracking Gantt and that'll show me the baseline bar and uh, what's actually going on or what's changed. Uh, so we can do that. Another way of doing much the same thing, it gives a slightly different view to it, is to just say I want to see the baseline. And so you can choose which baseline you want to see. And in this case, it will show the baseline bar just behind them. As things get delayed, it shows how uh, where the baseline is and where the current situation of activities is in your project. If we want to get rid of that, we can just click on that again and it will disappear. And the slippage is going to show where uh, you have the project has slipped. So in this case, this is showing where your variance is, the slippage in your project. So in this particular project, uh, I've updated it and it's four days behind schedule. So this is showing the activities that were impacted. So this variance came in over here, right? If I zoomed in on this and I went to, like I showed you before, to view and I clicked on um, the time scale days here, then it should pull out two days. There we go. And then we can even see uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's four days. So that's your variance that it's showing. It shows it started four days late and it finished four days late, right? So it's pushed the project um, over four days. And then of course, it's just going to follow the critical path all the way through your project. So if you just want to sort of the highlight the slippage uh, points on the activities, it'll definitely do that for you and um, you can always take it out again by just going back here clicking on it and then it disappears. So that's how you can bring that in and take that out and that helps you in the customization uh, process there. 
So that's just a few of the uh, quick uh, customizations that I wanted to cover in this short video. Uh, if you enjoyed this or if it helped you in any way, I'm glad. And please uh, subscribe. Uh, you'll see under my playlist, you'll see listing of MS Project. Uh, quite a few videos and if you're new to MS Project, go back to the beginning, like the first videos, they're numbered and you can start off with that and work your way up to um, this point. Uh, this may be beyond you if you haven't uh, done the, the basic ones, but hopefully uh, this has been helpful. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.